Hey everybody, Mr. Math Blog here. This is part one of segment lengths and midpoints. And, and don't forget, you can find all your lessons at mrmathblog.com. If we go to that site, it'll look something like this. And, and this class is Integrated Math 1, so we're going to click that link right there. And we'll scroll down. We're in the second semester. We're doing Module 16 right here. I didn't do Module 15.3 or 15.4. Uh, because they were graphing calculators, my students don't have those, so we opted to skip that. So maybe if I have time this summer, I'll put that up. But it's going to go right down here. So module 16 uh, will go right down below module 15. Okay, here we go. So our essential question is, how do we draw a segment and measure its length? So you'll see I have some construction tools right here. We'll talk about those in a little bit, okay? So the three undefined terms in geometry are, are, is a point, a line, and a plane. So let's talk about that, uh, these undefined terms. Okay, a point is, is just, it, it talks about a specific location. It could, it's in space. So if you can hold up your finger and look at the tip of your finger, that's a point. Or if you look, you know, uh, you know up in the corner of a wall, that's a point. There's infinitely many points around us. And so how do we uh, label those? We just label it with a capital letter here. And so we call this point P. Okay, so points are always lab labeled with a capital letter right here. All right, a line, you guys, it just connects a straight path. So if you just think of a line, it has, has no thickness, neither does a point. A point doesn't have any thickness. Uh, and it continues forever on both ends right there. So uh, there's a line right there, and there's several ways to name this line. We can call it line L, and notice that the lowercase l, um, it's usually in cursive right here. Uh, is out at the end of the line. Or we can use these points right here that are on this line to name the line. We can name it line AB. We can also go the other way, line BA. It's all talking about this line. And how do we uh, symbolize that? We do line AB with a little line symbol on top, and it has to have arrows on both ends. If it doesn't have arrows, then that means we're talking about a segment. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay? A plane is a flat surface, like your wall or a ceiling or the floor. Or your or your teacher's whiteboard in that that's what they'll use as a plane. So a plane is a, it has no thickness, you guys. It is infinitely any <laughs> infinitely skinny. Um, and so here's a plane right here. So this plane contains uh, the three points right here. And you can name this plane by these three points, or you can name it by the, the capital letter that's usually in the corner of the plane, okay? So whatever uh, way you want to name it. So you can call this plane R, or plane XYZ, or you can call it plane YZX, or, or XZY, uh, any three letters, just as long as they're non-collinear. That means not on the same line. Okay, and then we use those undefined terms to talk about defined, the, the defined term. So a line segment... Uh, or just segment, we're going to call it. It's just a portion of a line. Sorry, I got a fire in my fireplace going. You hear the wood cracking in the background. Uh, a line segment is just a portion of a line uh, uh, that consists of two points, and the two points are called the endpoints, and all the points in between them. There's a line segment, line segment CD, or line segment DC, okay? And typically, line segments, uh, we symbolize those with a segment bar on top. Notice there's no arrows right here on either end. So you can call this segment CD or segment DC, okay? And that's what this says. This says, this symboling right here says segment CD. If there's arrows on both ends, it would be line CD. But there's no arrows, so this is segment CD or segment DC, same thing, okay? And then a ray is a portion of a line that has a starting point, and it's actually an ending point. Or it's actually the starting point, but the book calls it the end point and it continues forever in one direction. So here's a, a ray right here. See, it's starting right here. This is the end point, they call that, but it's actually the starting point. But the textbook will call this, uh, a ray has an end point, and it goes through another point and goes forever and ever and ever in the other direction. So a ray is like an arrow, you guys. And so it starts on, on one of the end points. So we call this ray PQ, or, or with the symbols, Notice uh, the arrow goes uh, uh, on the Q side because it goes past Q forever and ever and ever. Okay, this says ray PQ. Okay, ray QP would be a whole different ray. It would be starting at Q and it would be going through P, past P, and be going way up here. So PQ and QP, they're different rays. Okay, but the segments are the same. 
All right, so let's draw each of the following. So two points, J and K, and then we'll draw a line through them. Okay, remember lines have arrows on both ends. So there's two points, J and K, and there's a line that goes through them. Okay, and we'll call this, uh, this is an undefined term. Your book will ask you later on, is it is it an undefined term or a defined term? So lines are one of the undefined terms, and we can, we can write it, L-I-N-E for J, K, line J, K, or line K, J, they're the same. Or for shorthand, get used to writing lines like this, line J, K, and this is line K, J. Okay, let's try another one of these. So this time we're going to draw two points, J and K again, and we're going to draw the segment with the end points, J, K. Well, that's easy right there. Segments, we can say, uh, and segments are defined terms, okay, just for later on when you're being asked that. So segment JK or segment KJ, and then this says right here, segment, because that symbol right there says we're talking about the segment JK, segment KJ, okay? All right, so now we're going to draw point K again, there goes the fire, and draw a ray from the end point of K, okay? Well, there's point K, all right, and we're going to draw a ray from that. So there goes a ray. It goes forever and ever and ever. That's what this arrow says right here. And it says plot point J out there. So there's point J right there. There's ray KJ. Okay, it's a defined term. Ray KJ is written like this. Notice the arrow goes past J. Starts at K and goes past J. That's what then forever. That arrow means forever right there. All right, so three points. Uh, we're going to draw three points, J, K, and M, so that they are not all on the same line. Okay, well, there's three points, not all on the same line. They are called non-collinear. We'll talk about that later. And then we'll draw a plane that contains those three points. Okay, so there's a plane that contains those three points. And we, we might want to put uh, a capital letter down here. Uh, so we can call this um, plane B, or we can use three non-collinear points to name a, a plane. So these three points, and you can name them in any order you wish. Okay. So I chose uh, uh, plane JKM. So we can call it plane JKM. You could also call it uh, plane MKJ or MJK. It doesn't matter. There's six different ways you can arrange three letters. Or you can call it plane B, okay? Planes are one of the three undefined terms. Points, lines, planes are undefined. Everything else has a definition. All right, so in step C, would uh, uh, ray JK be the same as ray KJ? Why or why not? Not. No way. The rays would have different endpoints. So ray KJ means you start at K and it goes through J forever and ever and ever. If we started at J and go through K, that means it's going down this way forever. So no, they're not the same. And step D, when we name the planes using the three letters, does, it, does the order matter? Well, no, we talked about that. So there's the plane right there. So, uh, using those three letters the, uh, in step D can be named using any of the six different ways you can uh, arrange those letters, okay? All right, so if line, this says right here, if this says right here, line, if line PQ and line RS are different names for the same line, what must be true about PQ and RS? Well, they got to be on the same line. Look right here. Here's line PQ. Starts here. Here, it doesn't even start, it goes through those two points, and the arrows mean forever and ever and ever that way. And then look at RS, RS is right here, goes through those two points, it's the same line. So if it means the same line, all those four points are on the common line, okay, and it's said to be collinear. All right, so we're going to do a little quick construction right here. So constructing a copy of a line segment. Okay, I'm going to do my best here. So in the figure, uh, the line, um, uh, the length of RS, so here's the length of RS, and we write it without uh, any symbol on top. So this says, when there's no symbol on top, it says this, the length of segment RS. This right here says the length of segment RS. It's our code geometry uh, secret language here. This says the length of SR. When there's nothing on top of it, it's talking about the length. Okay, it's the distance between R and S. So the distance between R and S, here's uh, RS, you guys. So uh, it's either 4 minus 1, so that's going to be 3, or you can start here and do 1 minus 4. And it's, it's the absolute value. So distance is absolute value. It's always a, a positive number. So so it's either, um, it's still going to be 3 no matter what. So you can just count the, 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 the length on that. So points uh, that lie in the same plane are called coplanar. 
Okay, the lines that lie in the same plane that don't intersect, you've probably heard this term before, are parallel. They have to be in the same plane, though. Ask your teacher about skew lines, S-K-E-W. All right, um, and then points that lie on the same line are called collinear. Points that aren't in the same plane are non-coplanar. Points that are not on the same line are non-collinear. I did not see that in your book. Okay, this book's kind of weird how they organize this, so I'm just going as the flow of the book here. So a postulate's a statement that is accepted to be true without proof. Okay, and so like undefined terms with postulates, uh, we use those for building blocks for later stuff. So here's what's called the segment addition postulate. It just says if we have this point on a line that's um, uh, between other two points, then all it says is this piece plus this piece equals the whole piece. Okay, that's what this says. The length of AB, remember there's nothing on top of it, so this says the length of AB plus the length of BC equals the length of AC. The length of AB plus BC equals the whole length AC. All right, so here, let's do a construction. A construction is a geometric drawing that uses a compass and a straight edge. So we're going to use this compass and straight edge. So I've got the tools down here ready for us, okay? So let's use the compass and straight edge to construct the segment, the length of AB plus uh, CD. So they tell us some st uh, steps here. So use a straight edge to draw a long segment. So I'm going to go ahead and use a straight edge right here. And I don't know if I have it in blue or no, I don't. Let's get it in blue. And then let's go ahead and draw uh, a line right here. So there's a line. This straight edge helps me draw a line right here. And then it tells us to, I don't think I need that anymore. So it says, uh, and then label an endpoint. Um, uh, let's see. So let me get a big old fat endpoint right here. Uh, and I'm, it says label it X. So I'm going to label X right there, give it a capital letter X. Okay, whoops, I got a big, let me go down here a little bit. And then so we're going to put uh, X right, right, oh, darn it, sorry. Well, I got it up right here. So we're going to put the letter X right there, okay? All right, so the next step says to open the compass, the distance A to B. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this compass. And I'm going to open it. So you put pointy on this end. So a compass has a point end and a pencil end. So I'm going to put pointy right there. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to uh, uh, close this up. So it goes right there. So it's right there. And then I just grab my pencil. Oops, let me go back to here and make it a little bit smaller here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and grab this pencil and draw an arc. You have to draw an arc so you can see uh, that it goes right through that point right there. Okay, and then it says now place this point over here and we're going to draw the same arc. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and draw that same arc right there. Okay, that's what that's asking us to do. Okay, and then it says uh, label that point, point Y. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, now the next step says do the same with CD. So we're going to put this compass on CD. So let's go ahead and put this over here. And then I got to rotate that up a little bit. And so let's move it out so it's right there. And then I think I did this in red. So let me go ahead and grab this and put it in red right there. Okay, and then um, uh, we're going to go ahead and make an arc so we know it goes through right there. And it says starting at Y. So we're going to take this compass right here, put it right over there, and then we're going to draw this uh, arc again right here okay you guys can do a little bit better than me and it says label this point point z so i did that right there okay and then so what it's going to say is this length right here plus this length right here is going to equal uh, the whole length xz so here's the length of ab we copied that here's the length of cd that's going to equal that whole length right there okay gang i hope that makes sense and there's your assignment if you're in my class. Take care.